This is the last section. Uh, we're going to talk about infinite geometric series. Um, we've talked about arithmetic and geometric secrets se series that uh, go a certain number of terms and finding the sum of those. Now we're going to talk about finding the sum of a geometric series that goes on forever. And that might sound really crazy. Why would something that adds up forever be something other than infinity? Okay, well, we're going to see. So, everybody uh, remember that uh, this is the sum formula for a geometric series, okay? And the n value is how many terms you're going to sum. And what we're saying is, even if n goes to infinity, this uh, equation might equal some number other than infinity. What happens when r, or the absolute value of r, which is the multiplier, is greater than 1? Then each term is going to be bigger than the previous term. The series is said to be divergent, and s sub n becomes infinitely large. What happens when r is less than 1? The absolute value of r is less than 1. It could be negative 0.5, it could be positive 0.5. The series is said to be convergent. And s sub n gets closer to this value, which is the limiting sum of the series. I'm going to give you an equation which is an adaptation of this equation. Let's say that n gets really big, but r is less than um, r is less than zero. So let's say you have like let's say so let's say r is 0 0.5, and then we take uh, 0 0.5 to the 100th power. What do we get? 0 0.5 to the 100th power. Wow, look how small that number is. It's uh, basically 8 times 10 to the negative 31st. Super small, right? So if you make this into a million, it's going to be even smaller. If you're going to make it into a trillion, it's going to be even smaller. If you make it into a Google, one with a hundred zero is going to be even smaller. So eventually you can see that r to the n, if r is less than 1, and n is really big, is going to be very close to 0. Okay, and that's you're going to use that fact to figure out what the limiting sum of an uh, infinite series is. You're going to say u1, 1 minus 0, you make r to the n equals 0, over 1 minus r. So you could just write u1 over 1 minus r. Okay, so if you have a special geometric sequence which has absolute value of r less than 1 and it's infinite, then it converges to a number instead of like to infinity. Okay, all right. So there's an example 20 on page 173. And now we're going to look at this problem here. Consider that 0 0.3333 repeating is equal to 3 tenths plus 3 one hundredths plus 3 one thousandths plus 3 etc. which is an infinite geometric series. Find u1 r and r. So u1 is obviously the first term, right? So there's u1 right there. r. r is, uh, let's see, the first term times r is equal to the second term. Okay, so in this case, what is r? Let's see, r would be, cancel those out, and we can say that r is equal to 10 over 100, which is equal to 1 tenth. So r is 1 tenth. So we found the values for u1 and r. Now, using a, show that 0 0.3 repeating equals 1 third. Okay, so we're going to use this formula. S sub n equals u1 over 1 minus r. u1 is 3 tenths, which can also be written as 0 0.3. And the denominator is 1 minus 0 0.1. So 
So now we have 0 0.3 over 0 0.9, which is equal to 1 third. Hey, there you go. Okay. Number two, we're going to do A and we're going to do C. Right as a rational number. Okay, so we're going to just do the same thing here. 0 0.4 repeating is equal to 0 0.4 plus 0 0.04 plus etc. Okay, so U1 is equal to 0 0.4. R is equal to 0 0.1, just like it is in the above problem, right? And then we can find the sum of these this infinite series by doing U1 over 1 minus R. So U1 is 0 0.4, and the bottom is 1 minus 0.1. And so that's equal to 4 ninths. Okay, so we've written it as a rational number. By the way, rational number means a, uh, a fraction with numerator and denominator, both whole numbers. Okay, all right. C. Um, 0.3123123312. .312, 312. Okay, so uh, 0 0.312 repeating is equal to. 0.312 plus 0 0.000312 plus 0 0.000, you get the idea, right? So U1 is the first term, 0.312. Now, you can see that R is no longer 0 0.1 because to go from this term to this term, we're going to have to multiply by something much smaller than 0 0.001. It would be 0 .00, uh, 0 0001. Is that right? Zero, zero, 001. So that would move it three decimals. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and then we're going to find our sum. S sub n equals u1 over 1 minus r. u1 over 1 minus 1 minus r. So we have 0 0.312 in the numerator and the denominator of 1 minus 0 0.001, which is equal to 312 over. 0.312 over 0.999, which is equal to 312 over 999. Okay, so there's a rational number, which is the equivalent of that. Okay, four, find the sum of each of the following infinite geometric series. Um, let's see, again, the, sum, the equation is that. So what we need is the first term, and we need the multiplier. The first term is 18. The multiplier is, let's see, the first term is 18. The first term times the multiplier is equal to the second term. Uh, let's see, so r is equal to 12 divided by 18, which is equal to uh, 2 thirds. Okay, so um, let's work this out. 18 divided by one-third, because two, one minus two-thirds, right, is equal to three times 18, which is 54. Wow, weird, huh? So this this series here that starts out with the numbers like 18 and gets steadily smaller actually adds up to 54. Okay, find each of the following. We're just doing A. Um, we're summing an infinite series. So the first term to the infinite term of 3 over 4 to the k. Okay, so the first term is going to be 3 over 4 to the first, which is just 3 over 4, right? Then the second term would be 3 over 4 to the second. And the third term would be 3 over 4 to the third, and so on. So we can see that the um, that would be 3 fourths plus 3 sixteenths plus 3 uh, 60 fourths, right? So we can see that U1 is 3 fourths. And what's R? Well, R is um, like the first term, 3 fourths, times R is equal to the second term, which is 3 over 4 times 4. So you can easily see that r is equal to 1 fourth, right? You can use algebra too to find that. You could say multiply both sides by 4 thirds, and then you get r equals 1 over 4 if you multiply both sides by 4 thirds, which is the reciprocal of this, okay? This is just algebra. 
Okay, r equals 1 over 4. So now we can uh, find the sum easily. So you can see that to find the infinite geometric series sum, it's actually not so bad. You just find u1 and r, and that's a lot less than you had to find before. You, didn't, you don't need to find n. n is infinity. Okay, and the bottom would be 1 minus, 1 minus 3 fourths, uh, which is, or 1 minus 1 fourth, which is 3 fourths also. So it actually turns out to be 1. Interesting. Okay, number 6. The sum of the first three terms of a convergent infinite geometric series is 19. The sum of the series is 27. Find the first term in the common ratio. Wow, that seems like it's impossible. Well, we know that we're going to use this formula because that's the, one, the only one we've been using. We're going to put two cases. The first case would be, uh, oops, and I'm not going to, I'm going to put 1 minus r to the n because the first term says, or the first sum is the first three terms is 19. So that would be, okay, so s sub 3 is equal to 19, and the first term is we don't know yet, and it's 1 minus r, the multiplier we don't know yet too, right? No, we don't. And the n would be 3, and the denominator is 1 minus r. Okay, and then this one would be the infinite, the infinite series, and that's equal to 27, and that would be equal to u1 over 1 minus r. Okay, so uh, we don't, um, we can like uh, have two equations here and two unknowns. So uh, let's try to um, do a substitution and uh, eliminate one of the variables. Do you see how u1 over 1 minus r is um, equal to this part of this equation? So what if we just substitute that in? So we're going to replace the yellow part with 27. So now we're going to have 19 equals 27 times 1 minus r cubed. Okay, and then uh, let's uh, multiply that out and or we'll uh, divide both sides by 27, so we get 19 divided by 27 equals 1 minus r cubed. Then we can uh, subtract r cubed to this side, and then we'll uh, subtract minus 1, or minus 19, 27 from the other side. So we have 1 minus 19 over 27. 1 minus, 1 minus 19 over 27 would be um, 8 over 27. So we have r cubed equals 8 over 27. Hey, look at that. Top is a cube, bottom is a cube. That only happens in math books. Okay, 2 on top, 3 on the bottom. r equals 2 thirds is the answer. Okay, for r. And then how do we find u1? Well, now that we know r, it's pretty easy to find u1 because look, here we have a an equation where we have 27 equals u1 over 1 minus r, which is 1 minus 2 thirds, which is 1 third. And then we multiply both sides by 1 third, and then we get 9 equals u1, and we already have u1, too. Okay? So we have found the first term and the common ratio, u1 and r. We found those answers. 7. Second term of a convergent infinite geometric series is 8 fifths. The sum of the series is 10. Show that there are two possible series and find the first term and the common ratio in each case. Okay, um, second term of a conversion of a series is 8 fifths. Okay, so the second term is equal to 8 fifths. The sum of the series, which is um, S sub N, is equal to 10. Show that there are two possible series and find the first term and the common ratio in each case. Mm, interesting. Okay, so uh, S sub n equals u1 over 1 minus r. Okay, and you notice that this equation does not have a u2 in it. It's a u1. But we can write u1 in terms of u2 because u1 times r is equal to u2, right? So I could also write u1 as u2 divided by r. Right? And now what if I took this and I put it in there? 
then I would have a slightly different equation. I would have u2 over r times 1 minus r on the bottom. u2 is 8 fifths. And then on the bottom we'll have um, r minus r squared. And s sub n is actually 10, right? So we can substitute that in. So we have uh, 10 equals 8 fifths divided by r minus r squared. Um, let's multiply both sides by 5 just so that we get whole numbers here. 50 equals 8 over r minus r squared. Multiply both sides by r minus r squared. We get 50r minus 50r squared equals 8. And now we are almost, we almost have a quadratic. So now we have negative 50 r squared minus terrible writing. Minus 50 r squared my plus 50 r minus 8 equals 0. Okay, and now we have a quadratic. And uh, they said that there's two solutions because this quadratic probably has two solutions. And so we can use, we can use the uh, quadratic formula to solve this. We can graph it and find the roots. Um, remember poly SMLT? We can use poly SMLT. Poly SMLT, you run with apps. And you go into number two, which is poly SMLT. Hit a key. Go to the... Uh, poly root finder. And we're just going to put uh, this coefficient, this coefficient, and this coefficient in the calculator. Order 2, yes, order 2. And then we'll say next. And then we'll give it the first coefficient, which is negative 50. Give it the second coefficient, which is positive 50. And the last coefficient, which is negative 8. And then we solve. And then we get that one of the roots is 4 fifths, or 0.8. And the other root is going to be 0.2. Okay, so those are the two possible common ratios. Okay, and uh, now we're going to find what the first term is for each case. So remember, the first term can be written as um, u1 equals 8 fifths, I'm just rewriting that, 8 fifths divided by uh, r. So in the case of r equals 0.8, we know that u1 is equal to 8 fifths divided by uh, 8 tenths, and that is equal to 10 over 5, which is equal to 2, okay? And then in the case of r equals 0.2, then we know that u1 is equal to 8 fifths divided by 2 tenths, which is equal to, let's see, that would be 8 fifths, 2 tenths, is equal to 8, okay? So when r equals 0.2, u1 is equal to 8. And when r equals 0.8, u1 is equal to 2. Is that good? OK. All right, is this the last one of the unit? When dropped, a ball takes one second to hit the ground. It then t takes 90% of this time to rebound to its new height. And this continues until the ball comes to rest. Show that the total time of motion is given by this sequence. Okay. Um, they drew a, a picture here. So basically, it, you know, it goes down and it takes one second. Then it goes up and it takes 0.9 seconds. Goes down, takes 0.9 seconds. Now when it comes up, it's going to take 0.9 of that time. So it's actually going to take... 0.9 times 0.9, and then when it goes down, it's going to same take the same amount of time, 0.9 times 0.9, and then when it goes up, it's going to take 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9, or we can write that as 0.9 cubed.
0.9 cubed. Okay, and then it's going to take that same amount of time to come back up. So we can start to see a pattern here, right? Now let's try to write this out as a series. So we'll take the 1 and we'll put it here. Then we'll add 2.9s. That would be 2.9s. Then we're going to add 2.9 times 0.9. 0.9 squared. Then we're going to add 2.9 cubes. And so on. And then we just discovered that that is a series which they had just given us, but they wanted us to show it ourselves. Okay. Find S sub n for the series in A. So S sub n. E. It's an infinite series, so that's the formula. What's U1 and R are the only two questions. Well, it looks to me like r is going to be something like 0.9 because you can see that 0.9 is being multiplied times each successive term. Now, this this uh, series is a little bit of a pain because look at the first term. If the first term was 2, then it would be very easy, right? Because then we would have 2 plus 2 times 0.9 plus 2 times 0.9 times 0.9. And then we would say, oh, well, this series, u1 is 2 and r is uh, 0.9 and I could easily find the the sum of this series um, because it would be u1 2 divided by 1 minus 0.9 which is 0.1 and that would just be uh, 2 divided by 0.1 which is equal to 20 right I would say well then that would be the answer is 20 Unfortunately for us, the, um, the first term here is 2 and the first term here is 1. So then we're like, oh, okay, well, now we can't find it at all because they're different. But we just got to keep in mind that, hey, what if, you know, what we want to know what this adds up to, but we want one less than that, right? So what if we subtracted one from that? Well, what if we just subtracted one from both sides? Then we would have... 19 on the right side, and on the left side we would have 1 plus 2 times 0 0.9 plus 2 times 0 0.9 squared, etc. So, so the sum of this series is 19, and that is the end of our unit.